you've been on set working with an amazing lineup of brilliantly talented people from Infinity Wars, and I'm curious, what's that experience been like? How did it compare with um, working with the rest of the Guardians game? Um, well, I mean, both experiences were were great individually. Um, I uh, we've really built quite a family on the Guardians movies, and I love that cast so much. And then it was it was great to then work. With a, you know, see a lot of the old people, but also work with a new bunch of people on the uh, Infinity War movies. Um, I, uh, I I just I, I have so much respect for um, for everyone that I worked with, and also for the people who who put these casts together. I mean, it's um, you know Hollywood's kind of a strange place, and uh, I, I gotta say I've really enjoyed all of the people that I've been able to to meet and learn from. What about Joan Anthony as directors? Obviously a different experience from working with James, mm -hmm. I imagine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I love Joan Anthony. They're uh, very different from my brother, but all directors are. And uh, I also haven't known them since I was born, so that makes it a little different. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, they're great. They, um, and I like how they work off one another, um, and they're pretty unflappable. Um, and I think that in, 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 that's one area where they are, that they share with my brother is that they're very calm, set presences, which um, which can be hugely important in films like these. So, um, working on the Gilmore Girls revival was that kind of a weird thing to go back after doing Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, well, I was actually I was kind of uh, doing double duty. Triple duty, if you consider both roles in Guardians, and then also doing Gilmore Girls at the same time. So um, we were shooting Guardians two simultaneously. I was flying back and forth um, between Georgia and California to do those roles. But uh, but the good thing about going back and doing Gilmore Girls again is that it was kind of like putting on a comfortable old pair of slippers. You know, I, I <laughs> it didn't take long to get back into that character. Um, Kirk is very very familiar and available to me. Um, and uh, when the writing is as good as it is, it's, it makes it that much easier. What's it like in the Rocket Raccoon scene? <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know most of the most of the um, the stills that people see are from the first movie when I was wearing the green leotard. But in the subsequent films, I just wear a gray tracksuit, which is uh, a lot more comfortable and less dorky looking than the. Uh, in the, in the leotard, so um, so that's a little bit better. But yeah, no, I'm I'm four movies now into doing uh, doing Rocket on set, and I think sometimes I forget when actors show up for the first time who've never actually seen me do it, they get a little freaked out by like, whoa, that guy's really just getting down and walking on his uh, you know in a crouch position. Is it method acting then? Would you call it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't root around and eat trash like uh, raccoons do. <laughs> But um, but yeah, I, uh, I did I did have to dig on some of some of my drama school training, and being an uh, being an animal, getting down and being an animal. So you previously worked with Michael Rooker on Super, another one of James Bond's movies. Yeah. Was it interesting to get back in when you were doing Yonder and Cracklin with Guardians of the Galaxy? Oh God, I just want to do one movie without Rooker. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you separate on the panel now? Yeah, right, right. right. Uh, I uh, no, I. Um, I love Rooker. He's uh, he's like a crazy uncle, um, and uh, and I knew him. We were friends before we even did Super. So um, you know, I've done now. I guess we've done four movies together. So yeah. talking about cracking, how's the whistling coming on? Gosh, I hope it's coming along well. We need we need Craglin to learn how to use that whistle, don't we? We do. I need if I'm going to have a any sort of an imprint on the third movie. I think he better learn. Well, obviously, we're going to hopefully have Craglin back in a big capacity in the third movie, but I think it was interesting. Fans noticed that you're not listed as Craglin on the cast list on at least IMDb for Infinity Wars. So, mm -hmm. um, is Craglin not going to be a part of that, or are we going to see you in that capacity there? I think I can't really answer. Um, you know, you you won't you won't see Craglin in the first Infinity War movie, and um, and then after you all see it, we can talk further after that. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of things happen in that movie that bear on subsequent movies. So, 
Because I think obviously, I mean, in the last film, it was really nice to see Kraglin go from just a supporting character to really a full fledged guardian. Um, is that something you're excited about with the third film? And has James sort of told you that's something that he's excited about? Yeah, we've talked a little bit about. He he tells me some. Uh, he gives me some hints here and there about what the uh, what the plot will be like for the third movie. I haven't seen any words or seen any script, but he sort of will sit me down and say it's kind of going this direction, and and he's such a uh, diligent uh, planner that usually the way he says things are going to work out, they usually are pretty close to to going that direction. So um, I, I don't know. I, I never get my hopes hopes up. It's it's Hollywood. You, you're really not in the movie until the movie's finished, um, which is a long ways from now. Um, and I, uh, I, I care more about the story than about the characters, so I just want the movie to be great, but anything that they, that they ask me to do, I'll be ready to do, for sure. How does it feel switching back and forth between Kraken uh, and Rocket on set? As a uh, acting process? You know, pl playing both... The scenes where I have to play both characters, and there are a, a few of them, particularly in the second movie, I think there's about four scenes where both characters have dialogue, and, uh, and it is definitely the trickiest thing I've had to do in my career. Um, I really just have to kind of um, tackle the scene from both angles, and then when we're on set, try to uh, maintain my, my focus. You know, I think, um, I think good acting, a, a large percentage of any good acting is preparation and focus. So on those days when I'm doing both, I just need to be doubly prepared and as focused as I can be and, and try to do the scene from both points of view. But also, it's, it's always a little bit easier because I know if I, if I screw up as Rocket, they can fix it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Does James ever let you choose a song on the soundtrack? James doesn't let anyone choose any songs on the soundtrack. <laughs> I think he takes, you know, it's funny, he uses a lot of songs that I've loved my whole life as well as him. We're really, my brothers and I are really, really into music. And um, and I'm I'm never surprised by his selections. He's never used a song that I don't know. But I also think he takes a lot of pride in being able to say that he personally handpicks all the songs with no help from anyone. So I'll let him have that. What sort of songs would you put on a soundtrack for a third film then, if you were allowed one or two song choices? Oh man. Um, well, w what I like about the third movie is that, I, and, and I don't. This is speculation. I don't know this. From James, but it seems to be set up that the that the soundtrack might would come from uh, from Yandu Zun in the third movie. Um, I, I mean, that might be a guess, but uh, so it'd be interesting to see what what uh, what Yandu listens to. I'd love to hear something like uh, Jukebox Hero. I think would be fun. Now that I've said that, it won't be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talking about things that aren't in the movie, the outtakes from Guardians are hilarious in their own right. <laughs> Do you have a favorite? Is there anything that didn't make it onto film but was hilarious on set at the time that you wish people could see? Well, I like that outtake that's in the that's in the uh, from the second movie at the end when I'm going over the, the bands when when um, Star Lord and Craglin are talking about the bands on the on the Zune and um, and and uh, Craglin mentions Thin Lizzy and. Uh, that chick Alice Cooper, and you know, <laughs> um, that's certainly a lot of fun. You know, I'm, we're pretty lucky though. I mean, it, the, the, there's been very little that's been cut from from the movie. I think I had one one scene as Rocket from the first movie, um, and then you know some little bits and pieces of stuff with Craglin from both movies. But for the most part, what we shoot goes in goes in the film. With so many talented artists on there. How, how free are you to maybe uh, improv a bit and how much of that is reflected in the final film? You know, we, we don't improv that much. I would say that, um, that the, the, uh, you know, that the, most of the dialogue is performed as written in the script. Things that are improvised are more likely to be buttons at the end of scenes. So like just a, a joke line that, that it goes out on and something like, you have a little more room to play there. Um, the bulk of the improvising is done by my brother from behind the camera. So I know that he has his script that he works with that we've seen, and that he also has his alternate line script that he has for every day, which are things that he's, he's feeding us as we're acting. He'll say, do it again now with this line, now with this line. But just like everything, even though they're, they're, they, they feel like ad-libs to us because we haven't heard them, 
Um, he's super prepared and usually has a list of them uh, ready to go. Not a whole lot is actually thought up right there on the spot. There are a few lines here and there, but but most of it's scripted. Yeah, what about Chris Pratt? Does he come up with a few one-liners he shouldn't do? Yeah, you know, we, there's, they definitely have fun, and I know that, um, you know, um, uh, my, my brother will say to Chris at certain moments, here's an opportunity if you want to ad-lib something or throw something in, you can do it there, and they talk about it. But it's never pandemonium, you know? It's never like everybody's saying whatever the, the hell they think is funny at the, at the moment. It's, we stick to the script for the most part and have fun, but it's, a, it's controlled fun. I think obviously everyone absolutely adored Baby Groot and we're so glad we got a whole film with him. I'm curious, what can we expect from Teenage Groot? Gosh, I don't know. Well, you saw a little bit of Teenage Groot in, his, uh, in the tag scene for the, the second movie. So um, you, you don't have too long to wait now. So I I, uh, I need to keep my mouth shut so I don't say anything. Actually, this is what I'm confused because everybody refers to him as Teenage Groot. Mm -hmm. But James actually said he was a preteen. So how old is Groot? Because he said on that tag scene that he was a preteen. In the tag scene? Yeah, when, when he was talking about the tag scene at some point, he actually said that Groot was a preteen, not a teen. R right, uh, yeah. for the, for, for at yeah. the end of Guardians 2. Yeah. Well, I, I so think does that, that make him about 11 or 12? Or Yeah, you know, yeah. Groot, I mean, Groot certainly ages more quickly than, mm. than a, a human does, because yeah. um, baby Groot in the second movie is about exactly. three months old. Yeah. You know, he's still... He's, which is very young, but still old enough to kind of like walk around and speak. So I think that whatever time, you know, whatever time may have passed between the second Guardians and the first Infinity War has probably aged him a little bit more. Yeah. Have you seen the latest Infinity War trailer? What do you think of yeah. Star-Lord beating Tony Stark? That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, I can't wait to... Uh, I can't wait to see that on, on the big screen, but I, I have inside knowledge about a lot of that stuff. So yeah. <laughs> You're amongst friends. Come on, we want yeah, to talk right, about right. <laughs> yeah. You don't care. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what I say here stays here, right, guys? <laughs> yeah. Pause the dictaphone for yeah. a second. Yeah. I think on the subject of Groot, um, James recently, I think, um, upset a lot of people when he confirmed the fact that the Groot that we see in Guardians Volume 2 is not... Um, the group that we've known and loved from the first film, but is his son, in fact, and that the group in the first film is officially dead, and I think that sort of changed people's perspective on the end of the first film. How did you feel about that? Um, well, it certainly doesn't change my perspective of the end of the first film, because I, I think that, I think that, that regardless of the, the mechanics of it, or the biomechanics of it, you know, the idea of Rocket preserving that peace from his friend um, packs some emotional weight, regardless of what exactly it is that we're looking at. I don't think that that changes how special um, that moment is, and it certainly doesn't um, take away from the sacrifice. If anything, if anything, it enhances the sacrifice that Groot makes um, in the first movie. But um, you know, I don't know. I I didn't know. I didn't know much about Groot. Uh, Procreation myself, so <laughs> I'm learning just like you guys We're are. We're learning as James teaches us. Yeah, does that mean Rocket is officially Groot's mother then? <laughs> well, like a seals. You know, <laughs> he's certainly his. Uh, he's certainly his adopted guardian. I would say that. Which um, which character in Infinity was the best reaction to a talking raccoon? Oh gosh, um, I think you're going to have to be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to have to be the judge of that. Although it's, it was certainly fun to. Um, to see the, uh, many of these new characters through the eyes of Rocket, because you know R Rocket does not does not have the same sort of reverence for the superheroes that the average Earthling is going to have. So uh, I think there's a lot of fun there. More on that point, is there a scene where Rocket encounters a wild raccoon and sort of gets the revelation of like introspectively like who he is? Anything like that. I can't comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the real question is who's taller, Rocket or Iron Man? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Who wears the biggest Cuban heels? <laughs> <laughs> is it easier um, or harder working with family compared to working with other directors? 
Uh, it's just different. Um, I, I uh, y- you know, one of the reasons that I think my brother and I work so well together is that yes, we've worked together since we were we were kids in, in different capacities. So our, our shorthand for communicating with, with one another is is uh, is very clean and very uh, very easy. Um, but also, I think we're both perfectionists within our own jobs, um, and he's he's very much um, you know he's a very good director and a very clear director. And I take my job as an actor very very seriously. And so I think that even if we were just meeting for the first time, I still think. He and I would work together um, really, really well because um, because he's good at talking to actors, and I'm I would like to think that I'm good at listening to directors. <laughs> um, so it really is. I mean, you know, I think that any the the, the advantage is is that um, is that any any time it's uh, any period of time where I need to figure out how to work with somebody to have a creative relationship. That, that part of the job is already done. We already have a yeah. great, great relationship so, walking the door. So you definitely don't have a Sam and Ted Rainey relationship then with your brother. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and um, but, you know, and then the negative things, he doesn't, you know, we, we don't, we're, we're not very competitive in, in my family. And he's the older brother and I'm the younger brother. So I think that's good. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I love, I love working with my brother. I, I hope, I hope that we continue to work together here and there for the rest of our careers, I would think that we would. I don't need to do everything he's in, and, and you know, he's producing stuff right now. I'm not going to do so. It's it's like I don't need to like we can go off and do our separate things, but yeah, I'll always say yes. Obviously, we saw the original Gardens of the Galaxy reunited at the end of Gardens of the Galaxy two from the comic book series. Mm-hmm. Would you like Cra- Craglin to be in a spin off with the rest of them? I would love to work with those guys. I can tell you that, um, but I try not to. I, I try not to. to you know, I can prognosticate <laughs> yeah. about what's going to go, yeah. about what's going to happen. Because you're only setting yourself up for disappointment if you if you try to worry about where you want the story to go. You got to let it just kind of go where it, where it goes. Who would be your uh, dream celebrity cameo akin to Kurt Russell in the last one? Oh my gosh! I mean, I already worked with the Hoff on the uh, <laughs> yeah. on the Guardians Inferno video. I don't know how it gets better than that. Um, gosh, I, I gotta say, between, you know, with everybody that I've worked with on these movies, not just Guardians, but now Infinity War, um, my, uh, my cup runneth over with, with, uh, with, with big, um, you know, famous, iconic, uh, actors, so I'm, I'm happy with anybody, truly. I think the Inferno video was one of the most glorious things we've ever seen. <laughs> oh. Can you talk about the experience of filming that and, of course, working with Zadu Hasso for himself? Yeah, right. Um, uh, that was really fun, that Guardians video. It was something that I think they um, they threw together pretty quickly. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they saw the link for the original, for the weird Star Wars dance video that it was kind of, <laughs> that it was kind of based on. Um, and uh, you know, this is something we got together in a in a day, and uh, you know, um, had an absolute blast. Did you get to choose which moustache to wear? <laughs> <laughs> they had some ideas. We, we we worked on it a little bit together, but I I certainly was very very pleased with uh, with how that worked out. I got to play that character in a movie the, like the whole time. I think. <laughs> What was David Hasselhoff like? I mean, obviously, it's lovely to see him pop up in the film as well. Oh, he's a lovely man. I just saw him at the Black Panther premiere, and uh, it was uh, it was good to uh, to catch up. He's uh, he's such a he's such a gregarious, big personality, very warm, warm dude. Actually, this is one probably more for your brother, but everyone wants to know when uh, Nathan Fillion's turning up in Guardians. <laughs> any, any which? When Nathan Fillion's going to turn up in Guardians? Oh, when Nathan Fillion's going to turn up? Gosh. I don't know. I'm always happy to see him, though. But we haven't yet. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> sure. I think um, if we can just have, if anyone's got one last question uh, going, there we go. Go for it. Um, so obviously, you you, um, you probably have a fan base starting from Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. How have you found since becoming part of the MCU family? Have you had any different interactions with fans? Have fans changed how they approach you? Well, you know, people. People talk a lot about the the fanboys and fangirls from 
the MCU and how rabid they are, but I assure you that Gilmore Girls fans give them a run for their money <laughs> every step of the way in their fervor for the uh, for the for, for, for what they love. Um, I'm I'm very grateful to be part of both those uh, of, of both those franchises, and I think it starts with like really great writing and great stories, and I've been very lucky to be part of those. Okay, well, thank you, and thanks very much. Thank you, guys.